Hello everyone, welcome to our Applied Mechanics lesson. I hope everyone is doing well today. In today's lesson, we will be tackling an example where we're trying to find the reaction. Essentially, this falls under our vectors module and we will be making use of both the sine and the cosine rules. So if you haven't caught up on the last two or three videos, I'd highly recommend that you do. This is just so you have a bit of background as to what we're dealing with and why we're using certain rules okay so i'm going to start off with reading out our question and then we can proceed to solve it it says two rods are connected to a fist fixed pin let's try a new color today okay so we know that there is a fixed pin two rods are connected to it um the one rod pulls eastwards with a force of 80 newtons so it's pushing pulling sorry <laughs> With a force of 80 newtons, um, while the other rod pushes on the pin in a southwesterly direction. So it pushes on the pin in a southwesterly direction. Find the reaction of the pin if the pushing force exerts a force of about 15 newtons. Okay, so that is essentially what we are getting from the question that we're dealing with. All right, but um since what we know so far and i hope we know our directions okay north south east and west all right so if they say southwesterly we are going to assume that it's exactly in the middle and this would be 45 degrees 45 degrees again it's an assumption if we're not told you assume reasonably all right so we'll just assume that what is happening in between here is about 45 degrees okay then that's not the end right remember when you are using your vectors or when you're calculating your vectors essentially you need to first find your resultant and how you go about that you need to represent excuse me you need to represent how your forces are acting you essentially need to show how everything is acting right so how i normally go about it or the rule of thumb that i prefer to use if you want to represent your diagram of forces i normally start with a horizontal one i don't know why i do but i do i normally start with a horizontal one which was at 80 newtons and i'll attach the end of one to the to I'll oh, attach the start to the end so essentially I put them in in order don't ask me why that's how I do it okay then this one is essentially 50 newtons that one is slightly longer and what we're trying to find is essentially the resultant on there or how it will end up reacting the reaction on there right then I'm just gonna put in that 45 stays the same it doesn't change Then we know that this is 45 as well, something about the Z angles. Then we have an angle of theta on there, okay? Then what we can start off by doing is labeling our triangle. I feel like my triangle is dodgy. Let's make it decent. We can't have such a triangle. Okay, so that's 80 newtons. Then we are trying to calculate that much better still dodgy but it's much better then now we can start off by labeling our triangle so i'll just for interest sake switch it around have a b c on there and we know that the side that is right across that angle or that corner will essentially correspond to it in terms of our letters so this will be b this will be a and this will be c okay then from the cosine rule that we did or that we established the last time, we're just going to check what we have, okay? So we have an angle at A. We don't have a length at A. We have a length at C or the magnitude of the force at C. And we have the length at B, but we don't have an angle at either. So already it tells us whatever formula, whatever rule we choose from the cosine rule has to include the cos of A. So you remember that there were three fundamental ones. And whichever one you ended up choosing essentially directed your unknown and then chose what to use. Okay, so a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. Okay, then from this point we're essentially going to sub 
So the length or the magnitude at B was our 80 squared. Length or magnitude at C was 50 squared. Minus 2 into 80 times 50 cos of 45. Okay. That's A squared. Okay, so I normally like doing this in parts so that it's easy to pick up where I've made a mistake. But you're more than welcome to plug this whole thing into your calculator and have your final answer at the end. I just prefer it this way. 2 into 80 into 50, that's 8,000. Cost of 45 is 0 0.707. Okay, then you can plug this whole thing in. Minus 8,000 into 0 0.707. Then I get a squared is equals to 3244, but remember that's still squared, so apply the root. A gives me 56.956. Remember, we're trying to find the magnitude of the force, so that would be in. Newtons. Okay, so the question would have asked you to calculate the magnitude and the direction. I'm just not sure if I read out that part of the question, but essentially it's asking us to calculate the magnitude and the direction. So now we have the magnitude of the force. Now we're trying to understand in what direction does it act. We have assumed, remember this diagram is not cast in stone, okay? Someone else may come up with a different direction, but essentially... Someone else may come up with a different diagram. My tongue is all over the show. But at the end of the day, the answers that we get essentially need to get us to a single final result. So let's say when we're calculating the direction of our force, or if we're calculating the force, we somehow ended up with a negative value, then that would say that it is not in the direction we assumed. Okay? But now we are near okay, we're on the same route or we're on the right right route, right course. We got a positive answer, then now we're trying to calculate the direction. Okay. So this was using our cosine rule. Then now we will be adopting our girl assigned rule, and this is so we can now uh, find out the angle, the angle on here, theta. Okay, remember that whole Z angle story? Yes, sharp. So now, our sine rule said A over sine A is equal to B over sine of B is equal to C over sine of C. You can literally take any combination on here, but we normally base it off of what we have and what we're looking for. So we're looking for the angle at C, right? Okay, we're looking for the angle at C, and that tells us this part has already made it to the finals. Then we're just looking for one other mate that we can kind of match it up with, okay? Then we have the magnitude of A. We now have that. That's essentially what we were calculating on there, and we have an angle at A. So we can use A and C. I hate that combo, but anyway. So we'll say A over sine A of sine of A is equals to C over sine of C. So A, we've just calculated it as 56.956 our sine of 45. C was, where's C? Oh, 50. 50 over sine theta. Okay. Oops. Then you can choose whether to cross multiply or simplify. I think in the last example, I chose to simplify. So on here, let's maybe cross multiply. Then on one side, I have 56 point. Why are you being dodgy? 56.956 sine of theta is equals to 50 sine. 45. Okay, then you can choose whether to simplify it at this point or you can still play around with it until you get to the very end. 
whichever method works best for you. Math is maths. So I'll divide both sides by 56.956. Then I end up with sine of theta is 50 sine 45 over 56.956. Okay. Then we already know that theta would be shift sign of that whole thing over there. Plug that whole thing into the calculator or plug it in parts. Like I said, I'm not really fussy as to how you choose to go about it. Then I get theta as 38.37 degrees. And remember from our diagram, okay? Remember from our diagram, from the diagram that we assumed or the diagram that we decided to come up with, and we said this is how we think the forces would be acting, right? We assumed that our reaction force or our resultant force would essentially be acting in this direction from here, okay? I'm not making stuff up. It's right here, right? So we already know that this direction says it's north of west. North of west, right? Then just to add our cherry on top of the cake, you could say it's 38.37 degrees north of west. So now you have the direction as well. You calculated the magnitude and you've calculated the direction and that's essentially how you'd be using your cosine as well as the sine rules to solve for your vectors that's if you're looking for your resultant force your equilibrium your reaction however the question may be phrased if you have any questions you know what to do adios